Hi, in this video, I am going to talk about the support for competent hierarchy in .NET clients. Starting 601, you would be able to arrange components in the form of a hierarchy. This feature can be enabled or disabled using a property in the server. Here I have logged on to server as admin and I have my advanced property space open. Here you can use this flag to turn this feature on or off. Now let us first take a look at how the components look in hierarchy. This is my Visual Studio client and I have Team Artifacts U open. Let me open a repository workspace. Here you can see that there are lots of components in this workspace and a few of them have been arranged in the form of a hierarchy. A component can occur in multiple places in the hierarchy. For example, Apollo 3 is a child of Apollo 1 as well as a child of component Apollo 2. In case we run into cases like cycle in the hierarchy or missing components, etc., they are decorated in the hierarchy for easy identification. One of the benefits of component hierarchy is to be able to reuse components. Let us say you have hundreds of components and they have dependencies on other components then it may not be trivial to remember all those dependencies when you add a component in your repository workspace. Similarly, if you want to use a particular version of a component, it would not be trivial to find all the dependencies with the right version. Components arranged in the form of hierarchy will help in such cases. Now let us take a look at some of the operations involving component hierarchy. Let us say we want to add a subcomponent to Apollo 3. So we right click on this and say add subcomponent. This brings up a picker dialog. Select the component which you want to add as subcomponent and press OK. Now as you can see Apollo 5 got added as a subcomponent to Apollo 3. In pending changes view a new change set got generated to reflect the hierarchy change. All hierarchy changes are tracked like a regular chain set in RTC. You can perform the usual chain set operations like deliver, suspend, resume, etc. Currently, this hierarchy change is only a part of the repository workspace. If you want to share it with the stream, you can deliver this change. Now, let us say we want to break this component subcomponent relationship. So, we right click on this and say remove a subcomponent. This only breaks the hierarchy and the component continues to remain a part of the workspace. Now let me open this repository workspace in editor. Now operations like add, remove or replace component act on the hierarchy of components. For example, if you remove a parent component, it also automatically removes all the child components under that. So suppose I want to remove Skylab 1 here if you see Skylab 1 is the parent of Skylab 2 and Skylab 2 is parent of Skylab 3. So if I try to remove Skylab 1 from here, it will also automatically remove Skylab 2 and Skylab 3. Similarly, if you add a component, it will also automatically add all its subcomponents. So. So if I add Skylab 1 here, it will automatically bring in Skylab 2 and Skylab 3 also. However, if you want to replace the component, you have an option whether you want to replace only that component or you want to replace the complete hierarchy. So let us say we say replace with component baseline. So you get an option whether you want to replace the complete hierarchy or only this component. Similarly, if you create a baseline on parent component, it will automatically get created for all the child components as well. For example, here let us say we create a baseline on Apollo 1. The baseline will automatically get created for uh, Apollo 3 as well. 
This helps you to get back to an older version without needing to worry about dependencies. That's all I wanted to cover in this video. Thank you.